All right, folks. So in this video, we're going to talk about SWR and power meters and what they are and what they do and how to use them. That's going to be the big topic, how to use them. But first, I wanted to talk about a couple of different things. Uh, first being these two devices here. Many people mistakenly refer to these as SWR analyzers. Um, or SWR meters. The thing is, is that you can measure SWR with these, but they're a lot more than that. And I don't really consider them a SWR meter in the traditional sense. And we'll talk about that. But uh, when you take a look at this, this is a Nano VNA H4. It's one of my favorites. It's the one I recommend most folks get. Um, you can hook an antenna up to this port here. And what it does is it shoots its own signal out this port and gets a reflection back from the device under test or device under load. People will call it both things, and it's typically your antenna. What's unique about a VNA such as this one is it has two ports. And many folks ask me, hey, hey, can I feed my radio in one port and get an SWR reading out of the other and leave this in line? And the answer is no. And that's why I don't consider this or this larger VNA an SWR meter. It's an analyzer for measuring it's what's called network vectors, and that's a little complex sounding, but really it allows you to check uh, your transmission line connected to your antenna, or you can connect an antenna directly to this and you can get an SWR reading along with other parameters. The other thing is, is that you can put a device under test. You can have a signal come out of channel zero and then come out through something like a filter or something like that, and then back into the other port. And then you can measure things like gain or insertion loss. Or negative gain. You don't have to call it insertion loss. You call it insertion gain, I guess. Um, but anyhow, that's that's how you use these. So for this particular video, we're not going to be talking about VNAs because they're not really what we would consider an inline SWR or power meter. And so uh, this would be an example of that. And we're going to go over each one of these meters in a little bit more detail. But you can see that you have uh, on the back of this this is labeled antenna and TX. So you would connect your radio in here, you would connect your antenna here, and then you can leave this device in line while you use your radio to measure your SWR and power output. If you're thinking about getting your ham radio or amateur radio license, I would suggest that you go check out ham radio prep. Signing up or enrolling is easy. Just click the sign up button, pick the product that you're interested in, for example, the technician class. When you sign up for a class in Ham Radio Prep, use the coupon code SMOKING8. There's no G in that, so don't make that mistake, and you'll be eligible for 20% off. Folks who use Ham Radio Prep have a 99% success rate. Ham Radio Prep offers a money back guarantee if you don't pass your test on the first try, and over 60,000 people have gotten their license by using Ham Radio Prep. If you're the kind of person that prefers self-paced video learning over reading books and materials, then Ham Radio Prep might be for you. Okay, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, let's just talk a little bit about what is SWR. And this is for folks who are newer to amateur radio and may just want a little bit of more of an explanation about SWR, but it's certainly not going to be a uh, deep dive into SWR. But when we talk about SWR, it uh, also stands for standing wave ratio. And sometimes you'll hear folks refer to it as VSWR or voltage standing wave ratio. And folks will say VISWAR. Like, did you check the VISWAR on that? But they're all talking about the same thing. And it's a measure expressed as a ratio that expresses the match of impedance from the transmission line to the impedance of the load. A lot of times we'll use the word impedance interchangeably with resistance, but they're not the same thing. Resistance is an ohmic resistance measurement that stays constant and is typically measured with DC current. With the antenna systems in amateur radio, we are actually using AC or alternating current. And different devices, different things like coaxial cable and antennas behave differently depending upon frequency. This effect is called reactance. Now, that starts to sound a little bit complex. So I'm not going to go into it in depth. I will have a link to a video that I did on impedance that explains all of that in greater detail if that's something that you're interested in. Now, a lower SWR indicates a better match between your radio, your transmission line, and your antenna. And we, a higher SWR indicates a poor match. Now, when you have a poorly matched system, 
you will get uh, signal reflections back from your antenna or wherever that impedance mismatch happens. And when that happens, your transmitted power will have reflected power come back, and then not everything that you're transmitting is either absorbed or radiated by your antenna. As amateur radio operators, we get a little greedy, and we want as much power as we can getting out to our antenna. So what we want to do is we want to minimize our SWR, uh, reduce the signal reflections, and increase our efficiency when transmitting or receiving signals. And I have a good SWR is close to one to one. And so that ratio being one to one means that there's minimal loss. A poorly matched system would have an SWR that's higher, two to one, for example. And you can even get to a point where it comes back and says, hey, this has an infinity SWR. It's typically an open load or short in your system. And it'll say that, hey, none of your none of your power is really getting out. And this is important because one, you have inefficiencies and signal loss. But then you also potentially could damage your equipment with these reflections of energy coming back into your system. So let's talk a little bit about what causes high SWR. And the first thing, and we talked a little bit about this, is this impedance mismatch. It's the most common cause of high SWR. The other thing is, is that your antenna may not be sized correctly. So antennas are designed to operate on specific frequencies and their physical length is tuned to match that frequency. Now, as hams, sometimes we'll put a loading coil or a matchbox or an un -un or transformer in line with our transmission line and antenna to help with that matching. Um, so that kind of alleviates antenna size and allows you to play games with your antenna and use a smaller antenna, for example. Another one that really gets people a lot, and I've fallen victim to this myself more than one time, is loose or bad connectors. And so maybe you have a poor crimp on your coaxial cable, maybe you have some corrosion on your connectors, or maybe your transmission line um, isn't plugged in all the way or seated correctly, and that can lead to high SWR. Another one that I've fallen victim to is bad or damaged transmission line. So if you kind of flex your transmission line, what you can do is you can cause a short between the center conductor and the shield inside the actual cable because that center conductor can find its way through the dielectric material that is supposed to separate the both of them. You may also fall victim to rabbits, chipmunks, and all kinds of other critters chewing on your transmission line causing problems. Or like in my case, maybe somebody with a lawnmower hits the transmission line and actually cuts it. The last thing is antenna location. So the location and the height in reference to ground can impact your SWR. Uh, too close to the ground could cause problems or interference. And then you can also get um, reactants from things that are near your antenna, like swing set, for example, or a uh, propane tank, or maybe your rusted out El Camino. So here are two very basic diagrams that I want to use to illustrate what we're talking about. So the first one is an antenna analyzer, and typically we connect this to a coaxial cable that runs into our antenna. And to do analysis on our entire transmission or antenna system. And this lets us see what the radio would be seeing in a real world scenario. Now, sometimes folks will hook the antenna analyzer directly to the antenna, and that's all fine and good. It'll tell you how your antenna is performing, allow you to do some analysis there. But the problem that we get is, is that coaxial cable can incur loss. And so these are random numbers. But for example, if I am transmitting 100 watts and only 80 watts make it to my antenna because of transmission line loss, I'm going to have a reflection at that antenna. It'll be minimal at a one-to-one, -one, but let's say it's higher than that. And some of that energy will come back to our antenna analyzer. <clears throat> well, antenna insertion loss runs bidirectionally. So that, that uh, reflected power will also attenuate when it gets back to the antenna analyzer. But the antenna analyzer only understands that 100 watts went out and maybe only 5 watts came back in. That may or may not be an issue for you, but it's definitely something you should consider. In the lower diagram, I show how we connect the radio and then to the SWR meter. So from your radio, you'll have a short piece of coax. It goes to your SWR meter. I would keep this as short as possible. Potentially, I would put a choke in line with uh, the radio between the radio and SWR meter, and I'd also put a choke after the SWR meter or at the antenna feed point itself. Most hams that I know mount their SWR meter close to their radio inside the shack so they can approximate what the radio is experiencing under load. 
Now, some people will go ahead and put an SWR or some sort of measurement device out at the antenna. And again, that's fine and good. Just understand that the placement of your measuring device, your meter or your analyzer, is going to impact your reading. All right, so we're going to talk a little bit about this particular meter now, and uh, we'll talk about how it's built and its different feature and functions. The first thing I want to point out is, is that this is just a simple dummy load that I made, and it has around a 250 ohm impedance. And the reason I did that is so we can be able to see actual SWR reading on this particular device. Uh, it was pretty simple to build. Let me just flip it over real quick. I just have four of these resistors. They're uh, 1,000 ohm resistors rated at 3 watts each. So I should be able to put about 12 watts of power into this. Um, and they're just mounted in series, and I just soldered them to this board with an SMA connector. And then we have that SMA connector going into our transmission port on the back of this Nisei SWR and power meter. This is a relatively cheap power meter. I'll have a link below if you want to check one of these out. This one is the RS40. But these meters come with a couple of different functions. Um, and here's our radio connected to that. Now, you can have a, some coax on either side of this. Keep in mind the, the loss that you can incur with coax. That loss generally increases with higher frequency. Uh, I could be doing this with an HF radio. I am using an HT because we have limited space. And when I say HT, I'm talking about a handy talkie or a handheld ham radio. Um, the first thing is, is that most of these SWRs come with a range. This one has a 50 watt, a 60 watt, and a 200 watt range, which means I can go up to 200 watts of power through this particular meter. It also has a function knob or function switch. I can either measure power, which is my power output. So if I go ahead and I key up, we get about seven watts out, which is what I would expect from this radio. Um, or I can switch it over to SWR and I can measure power back into the radio. So when I click this, it looks like I'm getting uh, my range is set to 15 watts. So let's talk about that real quick. With each one of these, the white lines are power and then the red lines are SWR. And then you can see at the bottom of each one of these is a scale that will allow you to determine where your reading is, whether it's power or SWR. <clears throat> now, the top line says 200. Let me zoom in a little bit more so you can see it better. Okay, there we are. So you can see here at the top, we have 200, we have 60, and we have 15. Those correspond with your reading down here on the range. Now, when we look at SWR, it's backwards. It's 15, 60, and 200. So because we're set on the 50 watt range, uh, we want to use, and we're set for SWR, we want to use the arc at the top of the orange. This is really handy when they come this way. Um, it gives you some instructions on the back, so I would always check the meter in entirely when you're going to use it just to see if there's anything like this. There's some uh, specifications down here. For example, there's insertion loss, and it talks about that. Um, it says impedance at 50 ohms, so that's what it's calibrated for. It gives you your frequency ranges, which is uh, also very helpful. I've actually attempted to put a frequency through here that it wasn't, uh, <laughs> it, it wasn't built for, and it didn't work so well for me. But then you can also see where you plug in your antenna and your transmission, um, your, your transmission device, like your radio. So hopefully that answers some questions about this particular type of meter. Let's take a look at a different meter and see what it comes with. Now, this is a meter by MFJ. It's the 894, and you can see that up here. And I love this meter, one, because it's massive, and I can see it very cleanly. Um, another reason is it's got a couple of nice functions. It can do HF frequencies, and it can do uh, UHF and VHF frequencies. Like the other meter that we looked at, it has a range. And so we can go from 2 watts to 20 watts to 200 watts which is pretty handy. It also has a function down here, so you can take a look at average versus your peak envelope power. So if I'm transmitting for a period of time and I'm talking into my microphone, all of that power is gonna average out to something. So maybe I wanna know how much my average wattage is, is coming out. Now my peak envelope during periods of inflection in my voice, I'll get a higher modulation, which is more power that goes through the meter. I typically leave this at average, but people do different things and that's why they have functions like this. Uh, let's take a look at the front of this, <clears throat> and what you can see are two different needles, and we'll see how these work. I'll get uh, a different camera angle out, and we'll, we'll run some signals through it. But like the other one, we have a series of scales on here, right? Like you can see at the top of it are forward power versus reflected power. Both of these arcs are measured in watts, but you can see the top bar is 200, then 20, then 2 watts. 
Uh, at the bottom, it uh, does a similar thing. It says 50, 5, and 3 are, are the scales for that. Um, now, at the bottom, you have in red where it says SWR, and each one of these red arcs has an SWR value. The way that this works is that when you key up, you're going to have these needles cross at a point on this particular interface. And that's how you read your SWR, wherever those needles cross. And we'll get ready to do an example of that in a few minutes. On the back of this, there's a couple of things to note. One is that it has a 12 volt DC input. So let me go ahead and plug, uh, plug this in real quick. And then you can see what it does. So for this particular device, I can turn the LED on and really it just turns on a light. It does not need that light in order to operate. It's not necessary. It's just a nice thing to have. And then on the back, we have two sets of ports. So here you can see that this one says 125 megahertz to 525 megahertz. And so I would use this if I was going to do any measurements in between those, my UHF and VHF. We have the TX for our transmitter, so our, our radio would plug in here, and then our antenna would plug in here. Same thing for this side, except for this goes from 1.6 megahertz all the way up to 200 megahertz. So if I was doing HF, I would have it plugged in here. I could also plug in my mobile radio to these two, my mobile radio in here, my antenna here. And then I would just use this top switch to toggle between the two different uh, radios if I was going to transmit on a different set of bands. All right, so now I want to take a look at this. It's another Nisei uh, digital. This one is a digital SWR and power meter. It's the DG503. And I really bought this for one reason, and one reason only is because I make YouTube videos, and it's easier to read a digital meter than a cross meter when you are <laughs> using a camera. And that is really it. And so what I can see here is my forward power, my reflected power, just like I could on the cross needle meter, and then I get an SWR reading. This, this uh, meter, like the other one, has settings for UHF and VHF, and then it just has a power button to turn the meter on and turn the meter off. If we take a look at the back of the meter, it has a similar configuration as last time, 125 to 525 megahertz, and I would use this for my radio, this for my, ant this for my antenna, and then for HF, this one says 1.6, just like the other one, all the way through 60 megahertz, so the other one went to 120, so this one only goes to 60. And I would connect the radio here and my antenna system here. And then I would operate leaving this in line so I could monitor my forward reflected and SWR. All right, I'm not gonna set this one up to a radio because it's pretty simple to see how it works. These numbers change. But I did wanna show how we read the cross needle. So let me get that set up so we can see what that looks like. Okay, so here you can see the MFJ894 and our cross needle. And I just want to point out that right now we're set for average, which is fine. And then I am set to the 20 watt scale and we have UHF and VHF enabled. And so when I key this up, you can see on the forward power, we are somewhere around six, seven, something like that. On the reflected power, we're probably a little bit uh, under three. So we're probably about two and a half, two and three quarter watts reflected. And you can see that the needles cross right at the five on the red arc for SWR. So that would indicate a five to one SWR, which isn't that good. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to stop and I'm going to connect up my 50 watt uh, dummy load. So you can see the difference between a high and a low SWR on these cross needles. Okay. We have the 50 ohm dummy load in place. So let me go ahead and key up. And then you can see our forward power is really the only needle that moves because we have a good match, meaning that there's less reflected power, and which means I have a one-to-one -one SWR. And that's pretty good. Anyhow, I hope this helps folks who are trying to learn how to use SWR and power meters. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, or recommendations, go ahead and post them below and I'll do my best to respond. As always, thanks for watching, everybody. It's greatly appreciated.